In this video, we discuss heat capacities of gases at constant volume. In a prior video, we have seen how the internal energy depends on temperature, and we have seen that uh, uh, the way to express the dependence of the internal energy with temperature at constant volume uh, is just the heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, so now what we actually do is see if we can leverage this piece of knowledge that we have acquired in a prior video to further understand heat capacities of ideal gases. Okay, so uh, notice that in order to obtain the heat capacity at constant volume of a gas, you simply would need to take the first derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature. But it turns out that for gases, uh, ideal gases, okay, we actually have a way to calculate how the internal energy is, or what the internal energy is, uh, applying the equipartition of energy principle, which we have also reviewed in a prior video. Okay, so according to the equipartition of energy principle, for an monatomic ideal gas, the average in, uh, internal energy is 3 halves kVT, but if you have molecular gases, then you will have different internal energies, average internal energies. If it's linear, that is the expression that you have to use, and if it's nonlinear, this is the expression that you have to use, and these molecular gases uh, contain contributions not only from translation, which is what the monotonic ideal gas has, but also rotation and vibrations. Okay, so uh, what, they, we, what we can then do is simply take these expressions to calculate an average heat capacity at constant volume for gases simply by taking the first derivative of the expression of these internal energies with respect to temperature. Okay, this is uh, straightforwardly done by you know with using a monotonic ideal gas like we can say that the heat capacity of a monotonic ideal gas will be the first derivative of that expression right so three halves kvt uh, with respect to temperature but of course three halves and k those are constants so then what you have is that this is simply three halves kv okay these are all average okay because that internal energy is average Okay, great. So uh, notice that uh, under this equipartition of energy principle, a, monot a monotonic ideal gas would not have um, a dependence uh, of temperature on its heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, and that's uh, that's reasonable. Now, uh, these are um, these internal energies that we have right here are per particle. Okay, so if you're thinking about a gas, uh, 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 a volume of a gas. That will be the energy, uh, the average energy per particle for each one of the particles. Uh, you know, that's a little awkward because when we work with macroscopic samples, we have a huge number of particles, right? So something that we prefer to do in the molecular sciences is define these quantities per mole. Okay, so the only thing that you have to do to transform this uh, to per mole uh, uh, quantities is simply take the contribution per particle and multiply by however many particles you have in one mole, but of course we know that that's just the Avogadro number. Okay, so again, if you want to do this for one mole instead of for one particle, you would just need to multiply this by Avogadro's number, n sub a, k sub b, t, and it turns out that this is just the r constant, three halves r t. Okay, so again, the only difference between that expression and that expression is that this will be per particle, and the units will be joules, and this is per mole, so the units will be in joules per mole. Okay, so the same thing happens here. You can actually define now uh, your uh, heat capacity at constant uh, volume per mole, and that will simply be 3 halves R for a monatomic, monatomic ideal gases. Now, beyond a monatomic ideal gas, uh, again, if you have a molecular gas, it will depend on whether it's linear, nonlinear, and then on how many atoms uh, you have, that you will actually obtain heat capacities uh, uh, that are uh, you know quite similar to this. Okay, now something that happens here is that uh, well, we can do it for maybe a diatomic uh, molecule which is linear. Okay, so for a diatomic molecule you will have that n is two two atoms diatomic. That means that there's uh, one half kVT there. So this is for monatomic. Uh, and what we're going to do is try to see how this would work for a diatomic. Um, Molecule again, so you will have five halves kVT plus kVT that will be seven halves kVT per particle. Okay, so that will be uh, seven halves RT 
per particle, but you take the first derivative of that internal energy with respect to uh, temperature, and this will be 7 halves R. Right? That will be the heat capacity at constant volume per mole for a diatomic molecule. Now, uh, this is actually a number that you can calculate, right? R is well known, and then we can do experiments to see how well the predictions of the equipartition of energy principle uh, agree with experiment. And what it turns out is that the equipartition of energy principle tends to overestimate the heat capacities that we measure experimentally. And actually, there's a good reason for that. And the reason seems to be rooted in this contribution from, from uh, vibrations. It turns out that the equipartition of energy principle assumes that you can deposit energy into vibrations without restriction. But in general, that is not true. Uh, it turns out that um, you actually need a minimum amount of energy in order to be able to deposit energy into vibrations. And unless you have that energy, then you will not have a contribution from vibrations. Ultimately, what that means is whether you include this term or not depends on the temperature of the gas. Now, this is something that we're not going to study in detail, but it helps us to justify the fact that the equipartition of energy is just an approximation that would work at infinite temperature. But when we work at uh, regular temperatures, like ambient temperatures, it sometimes happens that uh, the predictions from the equipartition of energy principle tend to overestimate uh, the heat capacities for molecules because again, in some molecules, uh, you uh, cannot activate the vibrations unless you have a minimum amount of energy, which depends on the molecule. Okay, with that, it's time to summarize what we've done in this video. We have seen how we can use the equipartition of energy principle to be able to calculate heat capacities at constant volume from ideal gases.